Tobias Bernard is well known for his blog posts and uh, his strong opinions when it comes to user interface design. And he recently published another article uh, that lent a lot of fascinating insight into uh, the rationale behind GNOME's decision-making process. So I wanted to talk about it here because I'm a design nerd and this stuff is fascinating to me. First, it's important to note that GNOME has rejected the traditional desktop uh, paradigm and they are instead forging their own path doing so in a way that they believe is going to lead us to a brighter, better desktop user interface paradigm. They do this in a few crucial ways. First, they've narrowed the scope of GNOME applications. And by doing this, they have rethought what desktop applications mean. Things like Nautilus, the file manager. Uh, when GNOME 3 launched, Nautilus was not only in charge of drawing, you know, the file manager, uh, it was also in charge of drawing all the icons on the desktop and interacting with them as well. Why was it that Nautilus behaved like this? Honestly, it's because that's how file managers have worked since Windows 95. But it has also caused headaches for the team, not only from development, but also through testing. Think about it, right? An almost entirely novel use case for the application that has one legacy application itself. How could that not cause issues? So they ended up removing the feature. Indeed, Tobias says in his article, quote, the traditional desktop is dead and it's not coming back. Note, I'm talking about Windows 95 era UI patterns here, not desktop versus mobile. Instead of trying to bring back old concepts like menu bars or status icons, invent something better from first principles. This is a statement of intent. This is a line in the sand. While other apps and desktop environments try to integrate every single UI paradigm that has ever been used historically throughout the in entirety of computing history, GNOME is willing to critically examine old and outdated UI paradigms and abandon them if they need to. Similarly, Tobias reiterated that, quote, system-wide theming is a broken idea. If you don't like the way the app looks, contribute to them directly or to the platform style. And I have to agree with him here. I've done videos about this before you can find a link up here. I just remember back to the GNOME 2 days when you would apply a dark theme to GNOME 2 and you'd open up Firefox or even Chrome and, you know, input boxes in the page would be styled with a with the dark system theme. And you would end up having like the website developer assuming that all input boxes were going to be white colored. And so they would style the, the, the text, but not the background color of the input box. So you'd end up with dark text on a dark background. And it was, I mean, it was just inexcusably bad. It resulted in a patently terrible user experience. And it's not just web browsers. A lot of applications make assumptions about this, the, the platform style, and they will specify a text color, but not a background color, which can end up being illegible for end users. I won't go too much more into this uh, topic because like I said, I've done videos about this before, um, but I do have to agree with Tobias here. I, I think that the idea of system-wide theming is a fundamentally broken idea. Tobias also said, quote, Flatpak is the future of app distribution. I'm going to have to agree with his takeaway here as well. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can think of multiple different uh, Linux app packages, uh, Deb, RPM, uh, Snap, App Image, but none of them come close to Flatpak. Flatpak is the universal package. Even Ubuntu derivatives choose to use Flatpak over Snap, and that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know right there. But Flatpaks are just easier to manage. They have better support and better distribution channels. And truthfully, on pretty much every Linux distribution, Flatpaks are the simplest and most straightforward package to use. They integrate well with most systems, and they have the most robust feature set and sandboxing utility. So yeah, I'd have to agree, flat packs are the future. And finally, the last thing that Tobias said that I want to talk about is, quote, every preference has a cost, and this cost rises exponentially as you add more of them. This is why we avoid preferences as much as possible and focus on fixing the underlying problems instead. And this just kind of sums up the whole article for me. Preferences complicate theming. Preferences complicate testing, they muddy up styling, and they often act as a band-aid for fundamental issues with the design from the outset. But Gardner, Linux is all about choice. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a good uh, GNOME tweak tool session, but I really only have to change one or two things in there, you know, when I first install a Linux distro. There are plenty of other desktop environments for you to choose. 
If you want the exact antithesis of GNOME, something like KDE might be more your speed. Now, I'm not going to bash KDE here. Uh, I like what they do as a project. I like their open source ethos, but I, I simply think that GNOME and KDE are about as opposite as you can get. <laughs> But if you'd like to read Tobias's entire article, check the link in the description because uh, it's really informative and it, it, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about this. Let me know in the, in the comments. Do you think Tobias is right? Do you think Gnome's philosophy is flawed? Let, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.